Hey everybody, welcome back to To Be Like Christ. We're talking about Matthew chapter 14 in five minutes. If you want the handout that you're about to see on the screen, there's a download link down in the description below. You can get it on our website. So when did the events of chapter 14 take place? Well, as with almost all of the chapters in Matthew, this was Jesus's ministry, which would have been roughly 26 uh, to 31 AD. Our important characters for chapter 14, well, we have Jesus, of course, and various displays of his power are going to be uh, well on display uh, throughout chapter 14. We then have Jesus' disciples. These were his followers, his students, people who were learning from him, and then 5,000 plus people. This was a large crowd of people who met Jesus near Bethsaida, and he fed them all with bread and fish. And then highlighted in this chapter is one of Jesus' apostles, uh, specifically Simon Peter. So where do the events of this chapter take place? Well, all of the places are highlighted in the little box on the map there that you can see on the screen. So Jesus fed these 5,000 people who we just mentioned near Bethsaida. That's northeast of the Sea of Galilee. Jesus walked on water on the Sea of Galilee. And then we have Gennesaret. And let me read you the description of Gennesaret from Lexham's Geographic Commentary on the Gospels, which I recommend. Gennesaret was a fertile plain stretching 3.5 miles long and 1.5 miles on the northwest side of Galilee between Capernaum and Tiberias. So you see Capernaum up there on your map. So kind of along the coastline of the Sea of Galilee to the south of Capernaum, that's kind of where Gennesaret was. Now for our outline of the chapter. The first section, verses 1 through 12, a sad section. John the Baptist is killed. When Herod Antipas, the ruler of, of that area, heard about Jesus' ministry and the large crowds that he was gathering, he began to think that John the Baptist had come back from the dead. And then Matthew takes his readers back to explain how John died. John opposed the sinful relationship between Herod Antipas and his wife that he stole from his brother. Her name was Herodias. Now Herodias, she hated John, and with the help of her daughter and a little bit of a trick, she managed to force Herod to execute John while he was in prison. John was beheaded and his disciples buried his body. And then in verses 13 through 21, Jesus feeds the 5,000. This is a popular Bible story. Jesus hears that John is dead and he goes away to be alone in a desolate place. But he couldn't escape from the people. Large crowds of people followed him. And when the evening came, the people were very hungry. The disciples recommended that Jesus send all the people away into the villages. That way they could find something to eat. But Jesus looked at his disciples and he told them, no, you feed them instead. When they responded with doubt at their ability to feed such a multitude, uh, Jesus miraculously took five loaves of bread and two fish and he multiplied them and fed all of the people. And after everyone had eaten, Jesus' disciples picked up 12 loaves, or sorry, 12 baskets of leftover food. Verses 22 through 33 is also a pretty popular story. Jesus walks on water in the Sea of Galilee. After all of the people had eaten, Jesus sent the crowds home, and he told his disciples to get back into their boat and to sail across the sea so that he could have some time to pray. Later that night, in the middle of the night, while the disciples were struggling against the winds and the waves, uh, Jesus came walking by their boat on the water. Now, the disciples were terrified, thinking that this was some kind of ghost or spirit, and, uh, understandably so. But Jesus told them, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. The apostle Peter, he wanted to walk with Jesus on the water, and so he asked him if he could, and Jesus told him to come out on the sea. So for a little while, Peter was successful, but as he began to see the winds and the waves, uh, his, his faith faltered and he started to sink. But Jesus saves him. And then in the last three, four verses, verses 34 through 36, Jesus heals a bunch of sick people in Gennesaret. Now, when it comes to the big picture, let's just think about this in the big picture of the Gospel of Matthew itself. I think this chapter beautifully fits in as a display of Jesus' power. And there's various uh, kinds of power put on display here. So Jesus shows the ability to multiply material matter supernaturally, right? like the loaves and the fish. And he had the ability to manipulate physics and the laws of nature by walking on the water. And then he had power to restore people's bodies from the effects of disease. So a mastery really over all of the creation. And that makes sense because, well, Jesus created it all. 
And then finally, an application. We'll go back to the story of Peter walking on the water. There's a lot of people who look down on Peter because, you know, he didn't make it to Jesus. He started to sink. His faith faltered. Be careful before you judge someone who has faltered after taking a great step of faith. It's really easy to judge other people from the sideline. But I think it's better to fail on the side of action than on the side of inaction.